Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to some Spellslingers content on this channel. I hope y'all are doing well and uh, I've really been dying to kind of tune in to the Spellslingers community. I've actually had some new folks subscribe to the channel and want to be a part of the Discord and some requests to be a part of our Spellslingers uh, different teams. This is Right now, I've got my main actually on our sister team, which is MTG SS Official LGS, and we've got four spots left. So we would love to have you uh, if you're interested in competitive play, but also we're we're pretty chill as well. Um, and then I actually have my alt account on the main one that's full up. Um, so if you'd love to be a part of our little community here at LGS, uh, we'd love to have you. But uh, that's not all I'm here today to do. So we're going to be playing some Gideon, and the reason why... Let me flip over to my handy dandy uh, little screenshot here. Uh, so you'll see that Fragster, who's an amazing member of our admin team, um, has been doing quite a lot of work and posting announcements. We had our week one popper event last week, um, which was, I think, you know, new for some folks who have never played popper. And some people have always really preferred that format. So we definitely wanted to have that available. And uh, really what we're focusing on for this video is week two, the terrible four. Um, so we've designated, and I think most of the community would agree with this, the four worst or kind of lowest win rate, lowest play rate uh, spell slingers are these four. I will say Gideon out of the four is my preference and I think definitely a little bit above. And, and we'll talk about my favorite Gideon build today, which is a throwback. Um, Yanling, unfortunately, I think never just got the love that she needed. Um, she's, I think, probably the lowest performing Planeswalker behind Soren and Ashiok. Um, and although, you know, there are builds that she can be passable, um, she either needed, like, different deck building rules, I think, like being able to play, like, flyers from every color or something kind of cool like that where, you know, with Vivian or Nessa, right, where they get to kind of pick and choose from different colors. Um, or just something that allows for the deck to really compete with uh, really stuff like Garrick, right? With uh, the um, the primal hunt, like Hunter, the wolf that just uh, fights everything. I mean, it, it just that card alone just kind of hard counters what Yen Ling is doing. Um, I know a lot. there are a lot of Ashiok lovers as well. Um, and then Soren, I really was excited about when he was released way back when. Um, but also just... You know, even with tinkering around with Death Shadow builds and different lands and things like that, um, although he can snowball incredibly well, there's just a lot of really good mid-range uh, options to deal with what Soren's doing. Um, and just the vampires were always a little, uh, a little less efficient than everything else. But we wanted to do, you know, a fun event, and I think uh, Bob Boss of Blades is going to be running this. There's a Saturday showcase, which is pretty cool. Um, Tuesday through Friday, we're just going to be kind of hanging out in the channel whenever we can, uh, just challenging people. So they also get to test the decks and kind of talk out some of the theory, which you guys all know that I love. Um, and then Sunday, most important part is the terrible four Swiss tournament. So win with two different of the four worst slingers in a best of three register here. And so all you have to do is join our MTG spell slingers, uh, discord. Obviously I'll have that link below and. Sorry for those who have been watching my older videos when I didn't know how to change the link so that it doesn't expire. Um, so keep messaging me if you find those videos and you're like, this link doesn't work anymore. Um, I promise you I will respond on YouTube. Um, I always try to check that uh, as much as I can to, to be talking with y'all. Um, so in light of that, I uh, unfortunately am away for quite a bit. Um, and I won't be able to participate in the tournaments and the events this weekend. Um, I'll be around for the next couple of days, but then I am, uh, you know, doing some vacation, which I'm very much looking forward to. But I had to show definitely my favorite deck that I would have registered for the tournament. Um, I probably would have had a harder time picking from the other three Planeswalkers. I probably would go with Soren. Um, and the reason being is that, um, fun fact... Uh, before we dive in, Soren actually had one of the highest win rates as a starter deck. Um, and there are a few reasons for that, but just kind of keep that in your mind. Because if if you even the playing field, some of these decks actually really do shine. Like, I am curious if, you know, Gideon is a worse Yanling if you build them very similarly. 
um, because the Enlink has more evasive threats. I'm wondering if Soren, you know, can't really keep up with Gideon when Gideon's got, you know, access to maybe um, better creatures or better synergies than Soren does, right? I'm wondering if Ashiok kind of beats them all because Ashiok, when you tune it to beat aggressive decks, um, you know, can be pretty potent. So I think it's a, a really fun tournament to showcase um, deck building strengths and uh, the strengths of the, play, you know, the best of the best players who have been around for a minute um, when recognizing, okay, in this meta, what is the best thing to do? So I'm not going to go too crazy with explaining the deck. I definitely want to play a couple games because I've been kind of itching to. Um, but shout out to Beyond Bounds and I know uh, Bucks Fu. You know, they were, they were the innovators, I believe, of this uh, Gideon uh, Fair Fight strategy. Um, and it's just always held a really, you know, uh, important place in my heart. I think I might have tweaked one or two things here. Um, but I just found it to be such a streamlined, aggressive strategy that actually has quite a bit of play to it um, when you really look at the deck. So in this, you're splashing blue, obviously, for Fair Fight. Now, why are we playing Fair Fight? There's one main reason. So it sets all creatures to 4-4. Four, four. This is good into mid-range, right? Um, because you're usually shrinking their bigger creatures down. Um, and you're you're making your small creatures, aka the mouse here, uh, bigger, right, to be able to fight. And because of both of the Paladin and how Aura of Courage works, right, when you get to play this, right, for the rest of the game after a friendly creature attacks, give it plus one, plus one. So why is that good? When you fair fight, it's a fair fight, everything becomes a 4-4, four, four, but it's actually very unfair because you've got Aura of Courage, which buffs all of your attackers to 5-5s, five right? Um, so that's obviously creating an, an advantage for you playing fair fight. Um, and then the other, you know, kind of linchpin of the deck is Paragon of Balance, right? Set the power of all creatures to their current health. So when you're running things like Three Bin Sentry, which is probably the best example, this card does nothing, right, without Paragon of Balance or fair fight. Uh, but it does quite a lot when it does have that because it either becomes a 3-3 three, three armor or it becomes a 4-4 four, four armor. And, you know, Gideon gets to push through an extra attacker uh, as his passive ability. And so when you're able to really develop your board and go wide and then have some of these kind of linchpin cards like Paragon of Balance, um, Mana Constrictor to slow down your opponent's strategy, Fair Fight to become unfair <laughs> in the fight, and Arrestor Lavinia even to slow down those mid-range decks, you actually get quite a bit of value. Um, and it's very it's very straightforward, right? It's like you're, you're trying to play as many creatures as possible, have as many good combat steps to enable your Gideon triggers. Um, you know, I think this is a, a great deck for someone who's like just picking up the game. You'll you'll 100% hit Mythic with this deck as well. Um, but it just, you know, in the higher tiers probably can't compete um, as well as some of the, the upper tier decks. Um, so this would be my favorite deck to res register. So why don't we just fire up some games and uh, at least showcase a little bit of the power of, uh, you know, Fair Fight Gideon. Um, and uh, yeah, we'd love you to join our Discord. We're running events on and off, I think, for the next, I don't know, two or three weeks. Um, really just trying to, you know, offer up some some amazing creativity from our admin team. We've added some more team members and um, to our admin and mods. And uh, yeah. All right. Enough of me just rambling on. Um, I don't think we want either of our five drops in our opening hand. Usually you just want to draw a fair fight later on. Lavinia is good and probably will be decent into um, Sarah later on. But Paragon is definitely one you want to keep in your opening hand. It's kind of how you can curve into it. All right. Let's hope we draw some ones and twos because this is not the kind of start that we want. If we can develop, it's going to be hard for um, Sarah to keep up. And it's interesting. They're running Paladin class. I would say that's not typical of control Sarah and that is very good that right off the bat we do this and what's really nice about this is we buff it so then when we play Paragon of Balance this becomes a 3-3 so it's kind of a nice just synergy there of you actually get to make use of that plus so plus one trigger off of the Faithful Steed okay. <laughs> same plays can we get a two drop off the top okay so this looks like uh, okay, well, that's a playable spell, so I can't sneeze at that. Um, this looks like, I guess, more of an aggressive Sarah that's running the life gain land, so that's kind of an interesting concept. So, might as well cash in here. 
buff some stuff in our hands. And what's nice is if they do end up attacking and we don't want to trade, we can just pinpoint Avenger whatever attacks next turn. Um, so here, we don't really have a free attack actually because they can block here and then they gain the life again. Um, and I'd rather them attack in so we can block, set this to one health, and then pinpoint Avenger. So we're just going to pass the turn here. We've got plenty of options. We can run out Stoneforge, but I think most likely if they go full attack here, it's going to be block, pinpoint Avenger. Yep, okay. And let's see if they have any combat tricks. They do not. Um, and since we block like that, they should be expecting an Avenger. So they might... Yeah, this if they put it on something else. Yeah. Not a bad play to have the steed. Also got Divine Smite, which is interesting. So we could Divine Smite this. But Pinpoint's just a body and essentially does the same thing. Although I want to get Divine Smite out of my hand to get Aura of Courage rolling, this is just going to be a more um, efficient play. This is still going to take a damage, which means that Paragon of Balance can still make it, you know, less of a relevant card. And we get to attack for two, because they don't have any good blocks here. So they'll probably take it, because they're effectively taking one because of their land. At least that's the way I would play it. Okay. <laughs> Alright, maybe they have their own Pinpoint Avenger. Very, very possible with a block like that. We shall see. But usually when I'm playing Sarah, when I've got this life gain land... Okay. They have, they have the uh, Divine Smite. That makes sense. Um, I'm just saying, well, I'm taking strictly less damage than I think. Okay. Drew Frontline Paladin, which got the buff. Um, Paragon of Balance is not going to do a ton. And Stoneforge essentially is a 4-drop. So we're going to play that and get our buff here. Um, hmm. Let's see. I mean, Relentless is nice. But I think, honestly, I just want to make our... Our Stoneforge Mystic into a, a real fighting creature here as a 6 4. Kind of blocking. Alright, and let's just uh, keep the pressure on. Hopefully, we can go Frontline Pound and into Divine Smite on some sort of 3 toughness creature. That would probably be our best turn 5. Okay. Well, we're not going to be able to do that quite yet. Um. Paragon is going to shrink this. It will buff the rest. So if we're thinking about efficiency. But I can also just run out Daughter of Runes and wait. I think I think honestly I, I prefer that. And I want to get more bodies on the board anyway. To start procking Gideon. Because we're, we're definitely behind the curve. Because we didn't have a great curve. Um, so you know the closer we get to Day of Judgment. The harder it is to close out the game. Not impossible, though, with this kind of deck. Okay. Annoying, but definitely not the end of the world. Um, so let's see. So we can just... We can Paragon of Balance here. Which allows us to Divine Smite whatever. Yeah, that, that's probably going to be good enough here, I think. And then it's fine if we lose our Mother of Runes here. Because then we get this Divine Smite out of our hand. Yeah. Not the worst, not the best. But now we can try and get that Aura of Courage if we're lucky enough on top of our deck. So finally, we might proc Gideon <laughs> this next turn. Alright. Your captain's not bad. Alright, Moreland Haunt. Oh, and we and we drew the Aura of Courage. Okay. Well, let's see. So there's no way to save both, but we can invoke the Dawn on something here. Um, and grow it past the uh, team captain. So I guess it doesn't matter all too much. Um, so we get to do it all this turn. Buff the Daughter of Runes that we just played. Get to play Aura of Courage. Play that. 
And then, although we are running into that, they're all going to get buffed. And we just want to get the snowball going. If they if they have the, you know, Day of Judgment next turn, I mean, not a ton we can do. Can't can't really afford to be that conservative. All right. Let's see what they got here. Got a good block on the arena team captain or the arena. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> I thought this had some other word in there. Um, Garsh Exorcist. Okay, interesting. So, it turns, replace all creatures in your opponents. Okay, so the only thing I guess currently now we can draw off of Moreland Haunt is a Lightning Souls. I mean, the more they're playing, the more this feels like they don't have Day of Judgment in their deck. Um,. You know, this player's definitely playing some cards I, I wouldn't normally play. Um, Alright, well, I'm going to take the free block if I'm going to get it. Here. Okay. That attack doesn't really help them, because these are going to grow to six sixes. Alright, get our... Sadly, our Lingering Souls. But that's okay. Um, and we just get to get in here with Gideon. Grow, grow our team again. And it is nice that Aura of Courage like, just permanently makes this a 4-4. Four, four. So they have no good blocks. Um, taking 9 plus 4, 13. Yeah, that's lethal. Alright. Honestly, very, very awkward start. But I think our opponent's kind of playing, you know, I, I would say an off-meta build of Sarah that, um, you know, probably doesn't do too well in, into this kind of strategy. I think control Sarah, unless they're really having a pretty rough time has a has a decent uh ability to deal with aggro gideon the reason why i think control star is just so good is that she has access to so many um cards that just gum up the ground and give you two for ones right so you've got like the the one that gives you plus three life you've got your two one signature card that makes an angel like you just have so many things to just kind of like trade early that give you some sort of uh you know advantage and Gideon can't really do that you know a lot of his stuff is like one for one it's very straightforward um yeah Garrick is gonna be a tough matchup here uh I mean we really just want to curve out I don't think I can afford to keep really any of these I just want ones twos okay uh, that's fine maybe we'll get to play the dog turn one I will say uh, Paragon of Balance and, um, you know, the, no, no one drop, that's unfortunate. Um, oops, that's not what I meant. <laughs> um, because they're shrinking their stuff to one toughness, uh, you know, they, we do have opportunities to fight things. Um, I think I'd rather have Thalia trade here. I don't even know if I'm going to be trading now. Um, so you know what? Let me just, I think I'll just Divine Steed. Or Devoted Steed. This, this is my brain on not having played Spell Slayers in, in a bit. Uh, I have on and off when I, when I hit Mythic on my other thing. Um, I don't think we're blocking here. Not only do we not want to give them a 7-7 seven, seven in their, in the top of their deck, um, we just want to delay blocking as much as possible because... Um, they get just such an advantage off of doing it. Okay. Well, we have a pretty good Paragon turn. We can make this a 2-2 two, two and a 1-1. One, one. Uh, but part of me just wants to get as much advantage as possible here. So I'm just going to um, play Steed, targeting itself. Because we also want to get Aura of Courage rolling as soon as possible. And then play Thalia. Um, and then I could choose to attack here. Um, I would rather just block here. I think I think I w will attack here. If they want to trade the elephant, that's fine. Uh, the thing is, I, I want to deny them um, the you know killing something on their turn trigger as much as possible. So it's a little wonky to do that because then also we don't have access to Gideon, but. In my mind, I think it's worth getting a creature off the board um, to deny them a bit of that that uh, aggressive potential. 
here we definitely have a choice. I think I am okay with, with making this block because whatever they're going to follow up with, we can Paragon of Balance and then make our dog a 3-3, which is not bad. Just depends on what they have here. Okay, they had just literally nothing, which that actually works out really well. Um, they don't have... They can't... Okay, so this might be... Worm, potentially. Um, so we'll see. Nope, just nothing. Predator is going to be rough. Um, it's just going to be a two for one for them, but we can't really play around it. That's that's also the problem with this matchup. It's, it's pretty hard to play around Predator. Stag, eh, that's unfortunate. Okay, well, Divine Smite's actually pretty nice here. But I think I have to play out a team captain. Um, I definitely don't have to trade here, so I don't think I will. Um, they have the Predator. It sucks. I maybe would have rather done that, but... We'll see. I mean, so far they've had pretty low tempo turns. But it's just at some point they're going to play a Death Shadow or a Koth of Head and it's, it's going to be really hard for us to push through it. Um, I mean, if we, if we hit our fair fight, then we've, we've got a shot. Alright. Blindside. Okay. Annoying, but definitely not the end of the world. Okay. Oh, that's pretty good. Play another team captain. And then... This is going to get grown anyway. Oh my god, I spewed. I should have gone invoke first, then play the captain. That was really dumb. Tim. Oh, we're here now, so... <laughs> Just straight up missed the trigger. But now we are a little bit insulated from Predator because it's going to hit the dog first. Yeah, I probably wouldn't block here. I mean, you're going to get more out of blocking my team captains anyway. Alright, so don't do what I did. Invoke the dog when you have a creature in your hand. <laughs> oh, goodness. Getting rusty over here. But yeah, this is kind of what matchups look like. It's like you have no cards in hand, they have a bunch, and it's just like, well, hopefully they don't have the, the right answers. <laughs> then I can win. Uh... Alright, Mammoth is not great for us, but it's not impossible. We're going to have double team captain trigger unless they have a removal spell here. Which they don't. So. We're not doing too badly here, actually. Double team captain's going to do some work. Okay, more than hot on Griffin. Yeah. Get to kind of live the dream here, actually. So the question is, do we want to divine smite something before blocks? So we can just kill this before blocks. Um, problem is, this gets a free block. So I think we just divine smite post combat. Okay, so what's their best block? Uh, they actually only have one good block, which is basically either trading here. Yeah. <laughs> Gideon gets the plus two as well. I forgot. Oh, this is pretty, pretty nasty, actually. Yeah, so they have to trade, which makes sense. I think that's kind of what you need to do here. You could take 11. I mean, if you've got Death Shadow. Okay. All right, so it doesn't feel great to have Divine Smite sit in your hand, but 
I think that was better than, you know, sort of uh, giving them the option to get the block on our team captain. We, we would have had to kill the... Uh, um, the elephant with divine smite because then they would have had the fruit block here. Okay, predator is annoying. It's gonna yeah. It is a two for one, but we still got our team captain. I mean, the fact that they can't, they haven't been able to really interact with that. Okay, and we've got divine smite, and I, that's definitely lethal. So. I wonder what was kind of in our opponent's hand. It just, like, took forever for them to really do anything. And, uh, that's a GG. <laughs> All right. Made some play mistakes, but... <laughs> Our, uh, our opponent definitely did not have a lot going on in the early turns. I mean, they, they literally skipped their turn three. So, I think we got pretty lucky there. Um, but, you know, interesting to see. Uh, you know, the Sarah deck was not really what I would say was a typical Sarah deck. And then uh, Garrick kind of had a bit of a stumble there. Um, but uh, I guess we'll close it out there. It's probably long enough. Um we didn't actually get to see Fair Fight, unfortunately. Uh, but just imagine some of those curves. Like, instead of my awkward hands where I had, like, you know, multiple three drops, just imagine you're you're able to go Thraven Sentry or, like, Invoke the Dawn in earlier turns, Griffin or Griff into Supporter, maybe Mana Constrictor, um, which I, this card feels underpowered in some senses, but I've always felt that in Gideon specifically, it actually does a lot of work for you because... It just makes it so some of their answers potentially come down later. Um, and that actually does make a huge difference. Like a turn later when you're getting pressure by Gideon makes makes a, a pretty big difference in my mind. Uh, Zinder Spill I thought was kind of a cool choice. Like you don't really care that your opponent's getting cards. Like you're at least getting uh, a card as well. And you're usually filling out your board faster than your opponent. So you kind of get a little bit more value uh, than when your opponent... Uh, you know, has a bunch of cards at hand and we only have one. It's kind of nice that we can draw. And obviously the four toughness synergizes really, really well with Paragon of Balance. Um, but even in a late game, if you've got a couple little guys on the board and you fair fight and you've got your Aura of Courage. And, you know, my last note about this deck is, you know, not unlike my, uh, my videos on Nahiri with Barbarian Spell, you really just want to get the ball rolling, right? It's like whenever you have a turn where it's like, oh, I can play Faithful Steed in a two drop versus a three drop, you should be doing that, right? Not only do you want to have more creatures on the board, obviously to proc Gideon, you just want to get to these spells as quickly as possible, right? Um, you know, you want to get your Divine Smite when you've got two or three creatures out. So you want to do that early so that you can roll right into Aura of Courage on a good combat step where they don't have so many good blocks. And then from there on out, it's just going to be really hard for your opponent to deal with the sheer kind of board presence that you have. We've even got some fun combos like Sylvia Brightspear setting everyone to one, right? And being able to Paragon of Balance or, uh, you know, Pinpoint Avenger. And this card just does so much work into Garrick specifically. Um, I think it's actually an excellent, excellent choice for aggro uh, and mid-range white decks. Um, and I think people kind of sleep on it sometimes, so... Just a couple side notes about the deck, but I uh, appreciate y'all uh, sticking with me. Um, I'm trying to record a bunch of videos, uh, you know, for various different games, but I had to give a shout out to all the work that our Discord is doing, and we'd love to have you. So please join, uh, you know, make sure you join those events. Um, we got prize support from WotC for all of them uh, for in-game rewards. And uh, yeah, just want to keep rolling, you know, with our awesome community. So thanks as always, and I will catch you guys next time.